Welcome back YouTube, VST here, Valence PC Tech. This is my Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra running with the notorious now Exynos 2200. Oops, yeah, bad try. And what I have here guys is the June update. Scrolling down a bit, Android security patch level from the 1st of June and we have the June update AVEH. Now there is a funny story with the latest updates for the S22 Ultra, namely the fact that the Exynos version got only this update and the Snapdragon peeps get a bit more, but in the end of the day I do believe that AVEH is right now the most recent. And guess what guys, it is already June, this one has been released sometime in February and this AVEH is already the 8th stage update. The AVEH update was one and a half gigabytes so Samsung are really trying hard. If you're here for the first time whoop, that's the moment for you to subscribe to the channel guys and don't forget to also hit that bell icon so every time I do upload a new video you're gonna get notified. Now first thing first a bit of an intro change a lot. Here is the update screen clicking on the link to see if Samsung are telling us something well they are overall stability of functions improved. The security of your device have been improved. So the second one we can tie into the June security update, right, well, it's okay. But what about the first one? And if you are keen to understand a bit more, then you're more than welcome to watch the full video. What you are going to see in this video, some tests on the home screen animation, some tests on notification animation, the recent menu animation. I'm gonna do also some Twitter scrolling, Chrome scrolling, some camera animation, opening, closing, etc. Also guys, test how the blur works, and of course, application openings and closing, gallery animation, widget animation, the app drawer animation. Um, that's of course not all. Of course, I did prepare for you some benchmarks. Over the weekend, I was in the mountains, that means 26 to 28 ambient temperature, some nice cooling for this phone, and I was able to snag in some under two benchmarks and also some gig bench benchmarks, and I always say that's not 100% relevant, but nevertheless, I keep doing this. So let us start with the first test, and of course, that's gonna be home screen scrolling and just using the phone, and I always start with this animation, voila. All right, you can just see, is this animation still fixed in the latest June update? Well, the shortest answer is no. It maybe it's a bit better, and I'm gonna do it something like 10 times, but you see there is this annoying luck. And if somebody asks me, guys, what is the benchmark? What is like the baseline for a nice performing animation? Well, hold your breath, I'm gonna show you. All right, I'm now back to the buttons. And this is very important for the test. Now I'm gonna repeat the same test, show you the same animation while using the buttons. All right, and you can just see, yeah, you know, it's probably a bit better. Not from the first time, right? I was testing this throughout the weekend and I really thought it's actually better. But right now I just see it's kind of like the same. I'm now back to my gestures and suddenly there is no way for me to set a benchmark. Benchmark will be something like these gestures but without the luck. See here guys, see here. For example, I will now show you my notifications, animations. Boom, so smooth, everything running really very smooth. And if I put my refresh rate, I'm probably going to still be able to do 120 hertz. See absolutely perfect. Actually, let me do this right now. All right, job done. We can just see if I'm not touching the phone because it's using LTPO 2.0, it drops down to 24. Of course, Samsung claims eventually at some point it's even gonna drop down to one hertz, but yeah, we cannot just see this with this test on very static images, all right? Now, when I start fiddling with my phone, it will immediately go to 120. I would say right now in the June update, this works very, very nice, right? And just Seeing here these animations from the notifications scrolling down, they are perfect. I'm not sure why I'm getting this very bad, very lousy animation every time I wanna access my home screen settings, but it's something that I eventually have to live with. While I'm here, guys, let me just show you settings and also, of course, the version of the home screen. So it's 13.105.21, okay? So no new version. Else navigation works quite nice, even the app drawer, so I don't have any problem with this. Hey. I forget to tell you, for this specific June update, I decided to reset my phone. I had problems with my phone in the past, too much playing around. So right now they say fresh installation. And I wanna also say, in my defense, I did not use any backup. So I installed all of this application manually. And you can tell because usually I have probably like 10 times more than this. And also, 
I am not giving this phone to my kids so that they cannot reload tons of games. But home screen animations is like this. This one in particular drives me crazy. And I really wish to tell you that Samsung finally fixed this in the June update. In my case, my experience, not. Not yet. They're probably doing some nice attempts. And you know, they are trying hard. In the April update, they were able to fix the animation here with the notification, which is very, very nice. And see here also the blur, guys. Like every time you move around, the blur is perfect. So I just asked them, Samsung, please, please just try to fix this as well. I know a few people that also suffer from this animation. And I do believe it should be perfect. That's the Ultra device. It's the flagship of a phone, right? This is the best Samsung Android phone. And I just do believe it should do better. And by by the way, that's my Realme GT, you can just see guys, absolutely perfect. You know, this animation, I know it's a little bit slower, right? But it runs really perfect. So that's my Pixel, and even sometimes my kids, Samsung A32 is doing better. So I'm not sure, I just think that's a software problem and I really want Samsung to fix this. While we're speaking about the animation, let's try to check the recent menu. This, by the way, nice job, see, boom absolutely flawless right everything works as expected i'm gonna do this a few times okay probably first time like not always a charm there was this glitch but then guys you can just see 120 hertz i'm gonna wait for the refresh rate to drop to 24 hertz and then boom just do this one more time see all the scrolling all the navigations everything really running the way it should be okay now let's just test going from the home screen so to the left side i'm gonna get the google feed which i think is quite okay scrolling is also not that bad then again the app drawer i think absolutely perfect the searching also works let me just type test and see and an interesting fact guys see while i'm using the app drawer somehow my phones doesn't want to drop to 24 right it just stays to 60 at some point see here when i click on this menu and i want to type something boom it will stay for 60 hertz for a while i'm not sure why probably because i'm interacting here with the search boxes and of course i can press show more everything is really very well integrated and this search works quite quite nice on the next section i want to show you guys the twitter scrolling because that's a notorious problem and of course i need to make the disclaimer it's not really samsung or even android's problem it's rather a problem for twitter and guess what guys i don't have even twitter yet so you'll have the pleasure to see me installing it and just see the way everything operates in this june update i would say really really smooth so i'm searching for twitter okay i'm gonna press the search button somehow again i get 24 60 hertz I found Twitter 120 hertz. I will press the install button. I'm just doing this live on the camera, guys. Again, I did not use any backup. I wanted really to give the best chance to my phone to surprise myself. And honestly, there were some positive things from this so-called surprise. All right, installing Twitter, I'll set up my account and I will do the Twitter scrolling so that we can just see how well it works or eventually not. All right, login for the first time with my Twitter account, guys. So we're just gonna see something live and boom, I will start scrolling, yeah? To be honest with you guys, it's not ideal, right? But honestly, I've seen worse, so I'm not sure if Samsung did something or Twitter did something, but this is the current state. Let me try to do a quicker scrolling. Yeah, okay, not perfect, right? But you should know this is pretty much what you're gonna get. And now it's time to check also Chrome scrolling. Let's open Android Com. Boom, you saw the animation, by the way. I'm going, hey, I'm impressed, I'm impressed. Scrolling, 120 hertz, very, very smooth. Now I'm gonna go outside, okay, one more time. Yep, still the same, see? Opening, closing. Now, by the way, guys, I am already starting to test the opening and closing animation. So let's test the Twitter one, yeah. See, this is what I like about One UI. Every time you close an application, the whole background pops in and out, and that's just, just nice, right? So this is why I'm okay to live sometime with this lousy animation like this one, which really makes me go crazy sometimes, but I'm just buying this because, you know, yeah, see, everything pretty much else works very, very, very nice. This was my Telegram. Let's try to open Facebook. Okay, lots quite nice. See the scrolling, everything pretty much okay. I can keep scrolling and scrolling using 120 hertz. And of course, now one more time, just open the Twitter one and show you the opening and the closing animation, I would say 10 out of 10. And of course, the scrolling experience is not so good. But then again, I believe that Twitter is to be blamed. But hey, still, this is probably the best results that we have seen. Now let's check how this camera performs because there's the S22 Ultra, guys. The power really is in the camera. So opening the camera, all right. Closing the camera, opening the camera, closing the camera. It's not so bad, by the way, see? Opening, closing, opening, closing, you know, there has been times where this was really poor. 
on my S21 Ultra before, finally after maybe 15 firmwares, you know, Samsung fixed it, it was really poor. Now on the S22 Ultra, I would say this works quite okay. I, I'm gonna kill it, I'm then gonna open it again so that you see I'm doing this in real time. And of course, I'm gonna now change from the back camera to the front camera, hi there, hi there again, one more time doing it, it's all very flawless. Going also to the video mode, you know, from the front camera to the back camera, okay, to the front camera. Okay, now closing it and opening it while it's on the video mode on the front camera. And of course, I'm gonna repeat this while I'm using the front camera and the photo mode. Now it's time to check the gallery animations. And because of course, that's a freshly resetted phone, guys, I don't have many, all right? So of course, this is what I have. And one more reason to really love the S22 Ultra, guys. Probably the best portraits I shot with a mobile device and I know iPhones are really very good at this and also Pixel is very good at this but I don't really care for me this is probably about the best portrait that you can get with all the things that you can edit the lightning the blur the bokeh everything it's really insane now something I'm not sure you know guys so you can do something like this and um, yeah if you have many like I had 3000 pictures it's probably quite useful of course you can also enlarge go big if you want and yeah from what I see, scrolling in a search row feels all quite nice. All the options are there, like adding a portrait effect, of course, is there is a face, but also trying to remaster the picture, all right? And the Samsung Gallery, by the way, got a lot of praise because of this remastering. I even read an article about a guy that put his old family photos and used the remaster to enhance them, okay? So let me just see, even on this nice picture, yeah, probably still are able to see so I'm cleaning out noise level a bit better and etc. So the Samsung Gallery works also quite fine. Now it's time to talk benchmarks. And you know, I'm not gonna run it because I did it all for you guys off the camera. I'm just gonna give you the good stuff. All right, let's start first with the Ging Bench. The notorious benchmark that actually banned Samsung for the GOS thing, you know. I mean, that's, let's try to bury this in the past. I have opened Ging Bench and I'm now gonna show you guys, I did five tests. And it's very strange, guys, because you can just see, and it's very weird, guys. It all depends on so many and so different factors. Sometimes I got like 800, so below 1000 on my single core score. Sometimes I got something like almost 1000 and 200. Sometimes, you know, my single core score is so bad and my multi-core score is so bad that I really don't know why. But then again, guys, it is about the ambient temperature. It is about how hot the phone is, if you have used it for some hours. Uh, did you charge before? Are you charging it and then trying to do the benchmark after it? So it's pretty much, guys, what I get. Like, this is probably my top benchmarks. And I tried to ask some friends around. They are doing even more on the multi-core score. What is more interesting is, I do believe, the anti -two. I think I can make my point with the end to benchmark. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, over the weekend I was in the mountains where of course it's not so hot, so I got a pretty much decent temperature on my phone. And, you know, first time I ran it, this was at home with I think something like 28 to 30 ambient temperature, I got this result, which people think it's really a bad result. And actually it is a very bad result for the S22 Ultra. I kept on testing and testing until I reached this result, 821K, which is about all right, and then I got even a higher one, almost 900K. And I also do read in my comments, people with the S22 Ultra, same Exynos 2200, get even more than 900K, right? Which is actually fantastic. And then maybe there is something about the chip lottery. Maybe they really got better beans. I don't really know. But hey, 891K is not that bad at all. So this, of course, provided that the phone really cooled down, like I showed you, using 27 to 30 degrees. Now let's try to add some widgets. No widget on this phone again. Remember, I did reset it. So hold the finger like this. I'm gonna go to the widgets, right? Smart widget. Okay, why not the smart widget? Let me just try to put it there. I'm gonna put it on my screen. Boom, there it is. Okay, I will hold it, drag it around. I have the clock here. Also the weight information works quite nice and flawless. So I would just say it is supposed to do what it does. Let me just try to add the Spotify one because that's probably one of the best widget animation guys so i'm just gonna scroll down until i find it spotify they only have one widget hold it put it like there and now guys just see the magic probably the best opening closing animation all right opening closing see opening closing open spotify closing open close it works quite nice guys and before i drop the video guys i want to show you why still i was surprised and i'm going to talk about the battery life 
Now, first thing I'm gonna show you, if I just scroll down to battery and device care, you'll still see that my phone is learning the usage patterns. I already have like two or three charges, which is quite, quite nice. And today, of course, is not a good indication because I put it on a wireless charger and put it off and etc. But I have some screenshots and they're very interesting. Let me show you my ever first result after I resetted my phone and updated it. So this here is my first charge and of course also my first test. And I think it's impressive. You can see I still have 50% battery. I have almost two hours of screen time, right? And I still have 50% to go. At this point of time, people were saying, yeah, you know, it's not good, it's bad, I can do eight hours, 10 hours, whatever, right? But I did five gig bench test, and I think two hands to test. And you know how the benchmarks are putting stress on your phone and they're like eating your battery. So honestly, I am pretty much happy with what I did in the June update. Before that one, and of course before the reset, I was barely doing 24 hours. Now I can safely say four hours, which is for me like the minimum. I mean, if I cannot get a four hours SLT from a phone with a mixed usage, meaning Wi-Fi and mobile, this phone is not for me, all right? If I can do six hours, if I can do eight hours, 10 hours, great. But I wanna do something between four to six hours. So four hours is my bare minimum. All right, guys, I really hope that you have enjoyed watching this video. I tried to put a lot of things there for you to see, really to feel if you're using this phone. So this is what you will experience if you get a S22 Ultra with an excellent version running the latest June update. Again, before you close this window, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, guys. Please, you and your family stay safe until we meet in one of my next videos. And with that said, VST over and... Bye. <laughs> Bye. Bravo. <laughs>